Hey guys, this little magic here and more spoilers are out for Amon Cat. Oh boy, I'm so excited. I know you can tell. There are some really fun, awesome, just incredible new cards that I just immediately want to put in a deck. And then I realized it doesn't make a damn ounce of difference because four more cards just broke the game. That's six total in case you weren't paying any attention. I have a very good feeling that we're going to get a handful of completely, completely and utterly unbeatable decks, and that's it. So prepare for the banning, everybody, because that's just what's going to happen. Either that or Wizards isn't going to have customers anymore. What they need to do is fix the problems in R&D so that garbage like this doesn't happen. Like, forget the Felidar cat combo. That was clearly a mistake that they admitted. You know what else was a mistake? Freaking as foretold, okay? You can't just toss out free spells twice per turn cycle. That's not right. So here's four more that'll piss you off if you know enough about the game to recognize that these are broken. If you don't, sorry, but do shut up about it in the comment section because you don't know what you're talking about. First up, Champion of Ronus. Oh boy, do you love casting out a, a free Emrakul, well I guess not anymore, um, for doing nothing? Here you go. I love free casting. God, putting stuff on the battlefield for free is never broken and never ban worthy in, you know, modern at all. Well, and standard, honestly. In fact, I recall them having to ban Emrakul because of that. Hmm, it's like they didn't learn their lesson. So check out Champion of Ronus. It does cost four and it's only a 3-3, so you got that going for you. But you may exert Champion of Ronus as it attacks. When you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Straight up, can't be countered. I mean, okay, Disallow would stop it. Other than that, it, you're not summoning the creature. Now, you're also not casting it, so you don't get the on-cast effect of Ulamog, but you still get freaking Ulamog and their decks eaten in two swings. So, free Ulamog <laughs> with swinging. That's all you have to do. You have to have him out for one turn, have them not blow him up, and then next turn swing and free Ulamog. Why do they think anything is okay about that? This is one of the stupidest, most careless, broken pieces of garbage I've seen lately. I honestly think that they were counting on BFZ cycling out when this came out. Oops, they changed their mind, so... Oops. I mean, it's not like you couldn't summon Metalwork Colossus or a Gearhulk or something horrific like that, so... Oh well. So yeah, can't wait to play against this! Next up, Insult. Honestly could care less about injury. You pay three... Only one of them has to be green, which is already broken because then you can put in white or green and ensure that your creatures are overpowered as hell. Damage can't be prevented this turn. If a source you control would deal damage this turn, it deals double that damage instead. So with three mana already gone, you're not going to just launch an onslaught of burn spells. But there are so many natural double strikers, so many creatures with menace. There's so many one cost and two cost spells that grant plus four or plus three in trample. So... Yeah, they aren't preventing this no matter what. It's trample. I mean, you know, good luck fogging it. You can't. So adding double to it, I mean, just look at my deck, Relentless Red, and imagine this card in it. I mean, you, you'll win on turn four every single game. As long as this is in your hand, you just won. Utterly, disgustingly ridiculous. That should cost five mana. They just made a mistake. So speaking of five mana, Liliana Death's Majesty. Now, this one's not that bad because she does cost five but she has five loyalty, and when she comes out, she'll be six loyalty. So create a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and then uh, mill two, basically. So not that great. I mean, she protects herself a little bit. It'll be hard to get in a strike on her, except for like a five damage flyer. Well, it'd have to be six damage. So she'll probably still be around. And then her negative three, which she could immediately use, uh, this is messed up. It's like you don't have to pay for anything anymore. Return target creature card from your graveyard directly to the battlefield that creature is a black zombie who gives a crap so ulamog put him into your graveyard by milling him in fact you might accidentally mill him or purposely with uh, the plus one ability or just self mill or just whatever you want and uh yep there's a free ulamog for you, you for five i mean just you just paid five and you got not only a hyper powerful planeswalker but you got a free eldrazi titan you just gotta free whatever the hell happens to be in your graveyard. So, not the easiest to control. It is situational, but it is devastating and game losing. And then, of course, her negative seven is a board wipe, because why the hell not? So, you have uh, two turns to get rid of her, and then you're dead. Well, two and a half. Destroy all non zombie creatures. So, in other words, asymmetric board wipe. You could put a 100% um, 
Eldrazi zombie deck together and just have her drive it. I mean, if they negated her summoning, okay. So she's not that overpowered, but just bringing out a creature straight from the graveyard for free when it never died in the first place is ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. I know Black's been doing that forever, but every time they do it, it usually costs some absurd amount, like, like five or six or seven mana or something. I don't know. I mean, it's not like I didn't build the El Zombie deck. I basically built her deck, but um, I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like bringing stuff out for free because there's Hello, Eldrazi Titans. And Asymmetric Board Wipes, I mean, okay, it's an ult, but she comes out pretty damn close to it. Basically one point away once she activates it on turn, well, zero. So the fourth one, and you know I saved the best for last, Throne of the God Pharaoh. This will piss you off, I guarantee it. It costs two. It's colorless. It will be in every deck. In fact, throw this in the same damn deck as that freaking god-awful red card. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tapped creatures you control. Well, that just destroyed Commander for you. That's fun. It's an artifact, so I believe you could fetch it with a couple cards too, actually. But in standard... You just, you swing with everything all out, give it all trample, give it all indestructible, fog it, whatever you want, everything's tapped, bring out servos, you know, do red rush, anything. I mean, it just, bring out anything, it doesn't freaking matter. Oh look, you take X more damage, two more damage, three more damage, four more damage on top of it. The game will be over on turn four, guaranteed because of this card, if you built the right deck and drew the right cards. I'm still thinking red rush is gonna be a thing, honestly. You just look at my relentless red deck, throw in throne, and throw in frickin' insult. You just won the game. I mean, that deck's sensitive to creatures versus boost, and you'd be taking out eight cards, but still, this this is just stupid. Anything with servos or cheap little thopter dumps or whatever, I mean, it doesn't say non-token. Once again, it really should say non-token creatures, because otherwise it's unfair. This wouldn't even be a good card if it was uh, non-token. It'd just be like, oh, two extra damage, three extra damage, whatever. This is one of those if I'm already winning, win even more types of cards, except for tokens. Then it's unfair. You know, if you already have seven creatures on the battlefield and you swung with all of them safely and they didn't die, you're probably going to win the game anyway. You don't need this damn throne. So it's borderline OP, but then as soon as you're like, huh, I've, I just flooded them with 12 thopters. You know, I swung with all of them, great, and now they take 12 damage. Oh, I just won the game a turn early. So not devastating, but incredibly annoying and incredibly overpowered. And once again, it's going to be a giant nuisance in other formats, so I really don't like this card. It really should have just cost like four, but even then, it, that just gives you more time to get more crap on the field. So the earlier this garbage starts, the better. So if you're running nothing but hasters or something, you're good. Now the other thing... FYI is you could run Cryptolith right or an improvised deck. You don't have to swing in combat. It just says the number of tapped creatures you control. So tap them all for mana, hit them with a direct damage spell or something just horrific, like battle for the bridge or something. And then, uh, ta-da, there you go. They take, you know, 10, 20 more damage. Utterly, disgustingly stupid, careless, and clueless. That is exactly how I describe the cards and the R&D department. So hopefully you guys have fun when these drop. I can't wait to see half these cards banned, uh, plus all the garbage that we can't stand right now. The ironic thing is I will pl put this out there as a possibility. It is possible that there's so much OP garbage, so much removal, so much unfair cards, that there actually will be a really high variety of decks because there'll be like six or seven just OP as all balls decks. But then it comes down to, oh, you built your own deck? Too bad you don't stand a chance, which everybody hates that. And then your other option is, well, you have to net deck. And then if you have to net deck, guess what? I mean, getting into the trials is a $45 pre-order right now, so you get out your freaking credit card. I hate that. I hate everything about that. No surprise there. Duh. You know what? Screw it. I was holding off on this one. I'm going to throw it into just because there's a little combo that I think people aren't quite realizing. It's unrealistic, but then again, it's not that hard with Cryptolith right to generate this much mana, so... Or, or Scions, honestly. A lot of people are playing high, high mana at my F&M. So, you know, that's cool. I like high man. That's cool. One guy paid like nine for an extra turn plus awaken. I'm like, that's cool if you can pull it off. Those like seven and up spells are very underappreciated. So here's a uh, Asersamiento del Segundo Sol, which means something of the second sun. I think approach or something like that. Entiendo Espanol, so I can uh, uh, um, um, entender esto tarjeta. I'm sure that was incorrect. So it says, si el Okay, I'm not going to say that. If approach of the second sun was cast from your hand... 
So they, they recognize that casting crap from the graveyard and for free is a little bit broken. Just a little tiny bit. A little bit of a torrential gear hulk problem. At least they admit it. The first step is admitting it, wizards. Anyway, if it was cast from your hand and, uh, wait, and you cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. If not, you gain seven life and put Approach of the Second Sun back into the library as the seventh card from the top. Yeah, you're going to shuffle by then. So, pretty crappy card on its own. Unreliable. It costs seven. It's a sorcery. It's just stupid. It, it can be countered. It's dumb. Except for one little exception. Mirror Pool. Remember that card? Pay three, sack it, copy, uh, target instant or sorcery. So if you have 10 mana, you win the game. Now, there have been pay 10 mana and win the game cards in the past. It's just, it's extra unfriendly with, like I said, Scion Generation and, um, uh, what's the other one? Like the Forced Improvise, the one where you can improvise any non-creature spell, and or, I mean, non-artifact spell. Your clues are basically lands, is what I'm saying. And then Clue Generation with the Blue's Clues uh, backup win condition. Uh, and then there's Cryptolith Right. Don't write that one off, especially with Servos and Scions. So yeah, you just get to 10. Maybe you'd even have a little bit over to cover it with blue because, you know, blue-green is the clue generation deck, uh, except that you would need white, obviously, mixed with this. You could do it with Aether Hub, though. You could you could splash it. You could make it happen. You could even throw in some artifacts that are fixers and filters. So then you, you pay an extra three, and you get two targets or two copies of it um, on the stack, which it's the strangest way to throw two sorceries on the stack together, but it is what it is. And then the first one resolves. Who cares? Second one resolves. You win the game. It's a bit janky. It, it's it's weird. It's hard to get it to go off, but I just wanted to be aware of it. I mean, everybody hates secondary win condition decks, and they had to throw in garbage like this every damn time. One person at my F and M is still playing Hedron Alignment. Okay, so these um seven cards, I don't want to play against any of this garbage. I want to play real magic. None of this crap. So it's a shame. I really think Standard will be ruined. There's a tiny chance that um they'll have uh basically what do you call it um. Like, like a high variety of ultra-powerful decks, but then nothing else will compete. So it'll look good to the pros and the net deckers and people on the pro tour and crap, but it won't actually be good. It won't be healthy. It'll be a very turn 4-5 format, and because everything's just overpowered. Like, insult, double damage, boom, you're dead. I mean, it, ev there's so much boom, you're dead crap in here. It's crazy. In fact, I didn't even mention the one that's worse than, it, worse than insult, onward to victory. Look up that one yourself. It's so bad, I'm not even going to throw it up in the damn screen. So... Uh, all these cards make me completely lose faith in R&D, not that I had any to begin with, but I'll lose faith in the health of Standard. They're going to have to not only ban, like, probably probably five cards to make any of this fair, uh, they're going to have to, like, apologize to the end users and announce that they're firing people in R&D. That would fix this. Anything short of that, it ain't going to fix a damn thing. If you think I'm exaggerating, you think that I'm estimating this wrong, you think that the cards aren't that powerful, you are wrong, you're an idiot, and I am going to screenshot your comment and throw it up later when uh, I prove you wrong. So have fun with that. I'll see you guys next video.